Good morning, uh, friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, all the people watching live on the uh, Life Ministry page. Uh, would, I would be happy to know that you are following in the conversation by you liking the page and also putting in your comments, questions and feedback as, uh, and we'll be happy to respond to as many as we are able to within the available streaming time. I want to take this opportunity to join uh, with many of our brothers and sisters, both uh, close and far, that uh, are actually uh, fighting uh, the COVID-19 infection. And just to assure them that we are all in this war together and we shall, show, we, we shall soldier on until we emerge victorious. My name is uh, Kevin Kinusu. Uh, I'm a husband to my lovely wife Faith and a father to our daughter called Kara. My professional occupation in this, uh, uh, in this life is uh, in program management and I'm currently serving as the country manager for Kenya Biogas Program. At Kenya Biogas Program, we work to ensure that households in Kenya uh, have access to clean, reliable, and affordable energy for both productive and, uh, and domestic use using the technology we call the biodigester. I am also privileged and uh, I, I would, I'm very thankful to have a close relationship with Life Ministry where as a leader, I am being equipped under the Leader Impact Program. And the Leader Impact Program is a program that looks at how to equip leaders to grow personally, professionally, and also spiritually for them to be people of impact. And this helps us have a good balance of our personal, professional, and spiritual life so that we can cause real impact to the different spheres of our influence and control. Uh, together, currently with a group of other professionals, we are passing on these skills and knowledge and tools to other leaders on how they can be leaders of impact by realizing harmonized growth in their 360 lives, covering professionalism, their personal lives with their friends and family and also spiritually. This morning, we're inviting you to a conversation around the topic of uh, how do we adapt you know, in changing times for impact. I would like to allow me to share with you a couple of thoughts and insights that I've been reflecting on in this subject of adapting to changing times for impact. There are three words that stand out for me in this topic of our discussion today. And the three words are part of the subject matter. First word is adapting or adaptation. Second word is the word change. And the third word that uh, comes this, that, that, that comes to mind is the word impact. These three words generally describe what I think has occupied the mind has occupied the minds and the hearts of very many leaders in this very trying season of the life of humanity across the world. People have to adapt. People have to deal with change. People still are desirous and are determined to, uh, to, to, to have a positive impact, you know, in their spheres of life, in their workplaces, in their families, in the organizations and the corporates that they lead. But how do we uh, go about it? How do we adapt to this change that has been sudden we've not had uh, probably uh, in the last 50 years such a, a humongous uh, pandemic how do we do that so we have to go through a process of change or adjustment by which we as individuals and organization become better suited to the environment that is changing the, def, the, the tunnel is definitely not infinite. The, the tunnel has an end, and I believe that there must be a light at the end of this tunnel that you're going through. It doesn't matter and, uh, how long this uh, 
process may be, but for sure at the end of it, we must and we shall see light. Adjustments in has always been part of our lives. And for us to emerge successful, we must be willing to adjust. In the current situation, I know we've had very many advisories from, from the government. Some are easy to comply with, some are uh, very disruptive to our normal way of working. But for us to emerge successful uh, in this unprecedented time and a coronavirus pandemic, we have to be willing as individuals, as organizations, as corporate leaders to adjust, you know, uh, ourselves, our ways of thinking, our ways of doing things, uh, our actions, so that we are suitable to uh, tackle successfully this environment that we face today. The word change is not, for many leaders, is not uncommon. Leaders deal and respond to changes every day. But there are some changes that are very uh, magnanimous. They are difficult to comprehend. There are some changes that are uh, disrupting. But we must appreciate that without change, then there is no opportunity for progress. There is no opportunity for learning. There is no opportunity for us to become uh, innovative and transformative. So change does not necessarily come to make the situation difficult for us, but to make us better. And when we deal with change, we must deal with it in such a way that we are also focused on ensuring that when we come out of it, we leave a positive impact to the people and to the environment that we are influence, influencing or that we are controlling. Impact cannot happen in a static world. We must adjust and change in order to experience or cause impact. Whoever refuses to change, then they deny themselves an opportunity to experience or cause impact. So adjustment, change, and impact are intertwined. And how we deal with them, how we apply ourselves to experience them, determines the level of success we're going to realize at the end of the challenging, changing time. We are certainly not living in ordinary times. Our environment has changed. And this calls for extraordinary thinking, extraordinary measures in order for us to minimize the impact of the pandemic at all levels of our society, whether as individuals, micro enterprises, you know, our country, we, our economy is driven by, you know, the micro enterprise sector, whether it's a multinational or even nations, we must be willing and we must ensure that we engage in a different gear of thinking, extraordinary thinking, extraordinary measures for us to minimize the, the impact that might be, might become of the situation that we are in. As we are thinking of that and pondering of that as leaders, many questions come to our minds at different capacities. And more often than not, we tend to react to the force that is rising against us or against our well-being. The instinct is for us to either fight, freeze, or run, or flight. You know, the three F. Uh, when you are attacked, you, can, you either decide to fight, you either decide to freeze, you don't know what to do, or you decide to run away what we call flight. Many of us are pondering, you know, even as families or as, 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 as corporate leaders, what will happen to uh, my bottom lines as a business? What will happen to my ability to uh, 
give my family or provide for my family the, uh, the kind of life that would make them you know, comfortable? How will I manage to honor contracts and the current difficult circumstances? How do I show courage and hope to the people that look up to me or the people that are around me? I would really not want to sound like uh, this, this, the severity of the current situation is, uh, is not serious. By all metrics, what we are facing through, uh, what you're going through as a country has a huge setback for individuals, for families, for companies, and even nations. And we're also looking at global economies being shaken by it. But when I began to comprehend, to, to reflect upon the situation and how complex it is and how it is affecting everything around and about us, from what we eat to where we go, who we interact with, our freedoms are no longer ours at the moment. We have to exercise restraint. A lot of things that we would have loved to do we are not doing at the moment. Many things seem to be beyond our control. But on deeper reflection on my personal life, I actually realized that we have had, or I have had many cycles of desperate doom and gloom and somehow situations and somehow managed to go through, through them in the past. In, and it is in fact, uh, that the current pandemic is disrupting and affecting our lives tremendously. It is also a fact that it will come to pass and many of us will have different stories of victories to tell. I'm reminded of a point in my life when uh, I ha actually had to make a decision to drop out of uh, my engineering course. And at that point, it seemed like my life had stopped. At that point, it seemed as if my future and my career was doomed. For six months, I did not know what to do as a person uh, in terms of career because I was trying now to secure <clears throat> a different opportunity uh, in a different university. But the decision took a whole six months for it to be made. And those six months were six months of deep distress because it felt like my life had stopped. But to cut the long story short, I managed to join a different university and did my degree in four years and finished. And I have never been fulfilled uh, in pursuing my career. And, 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 and all those distressful moments and all those you know, moments of uncertainty uh, are now you know, in the past. And I realized and I, and, and I noticed that had I not made that decision to move from engineering to social sciences, maybe I would not have been as fulfilled as I am today with what I'm doing, because I really love uh, what I'm doing at the moment. At this point in time, I'm also reminded of a man called Gijui Kitazawa. This man was a Japanese immigrant to the US who started the Kitazawa Seed Company back in the 1900s, in 1917 to be precise. He, start, he had to restart the company after his family was sent to a prison camp from Japanese, uh, for Japanese Americans during the World War II. It was during this time in February 1942, just two months after Japan had bombed Pearl Harbor, when President Frank, Franklin D. Roosevelt ordered that all Japanese be forced to relocate you know, to the prison camp, and over 100,000 of them were actually imprisoned. Kitazawa uh, and his family were forced to leave the state where they were living in the US and they had to sell all of their stock of seed because they did not know when or if they would actually be coming back to the US. It is important for us to have a sense of clarity on what we can control and influence and what we can repair and rebuild after a storm has calmed. This gives us a strong sense of peace and confidence, as opposed to focusing on what we cannot control. After the end of World War II, Kitazawa managed to go back to the US, and he decided to restart his business. 
which ran until the year 2000 and was acquired by uh, another person called Maya Shiroyama. At that point when Kitazawa was having financial difficulties. But to date, the legacy and the history of Kitazawa seeds, the story of surviving through a world war and thriving, you know, in, in, in a land where you're considered as an immigrant still remains to be told to date. At this point, I would like to share with you three reflections that I would invite you to ponder alongside me on how we can adapt successfully to these changing times and emerge as men and women or organizations and countries of impact. My first point of reflection is we need to have a deep reflection on our values. A deep reflection on our values. We must ask ourselves, what do these values really mean? You know, the first thing when you are probably joining an organization or you're seeking for employment to an organization or you're seeking partnership with either a person to grow a business together or partnership from organization to organization. One of the most rigorous topics of discussion is on values. Do we have the same values? What do our values mean? What does it mean for us to come together? What does it mean to our values? So we really need to, to ask ourselves, do these values that we have as individuals, as corporate bodies, do they have a meaning to us, to us in the first place? Individuals, organizations, and nations are led and driven by a set of value systems, by a value system. It is, however, sometimes unfortunate that in normal times, the values are silenced. The values remain like the secret code that runs the software in our computers. All we can see is the output, but the code behind it is not visible. And more often, it is until something has crashed in the computer or in the software that we go back to the script of the code and ask ourselves what has changed or what went wrong. It is important for us to know that the only constant that we have, what cannot be taken away from us, is our values. We can only give them away. We can only give our values away. We can only compromise on them. But they are inherently ours and they cannot be taken away from us. That is why our values, and I'm proposing that our values must be solid enough to keep us grounded during shaky moments like what we are going through right now across the world. The COVID-19 pandemic will have an, an effect on our economy, will have an effect on our movement, will have an effect on what we wear, it will have an effect on what we do and where we work. All of us, or most of us, are actually working from home and are striking a balance between, you know, uh, still delivering on your work and the distraction that you're adjusting to at home. But one thing that any pandemic or any challenging time cannot take away from you is your values. And I just took, time, took some time to just... Uh, reflect upon values that are outside there. Like in Kenya, we talk about peace, love, and unity. It is time that in our country, we actually reflect and, and, and ask ourselves, what does this value of peace, love, and unity really mean? And how should we apply it in an unprecedented moment like now? In the US, there is a common phrase that they 
talk about it's one nation under God. What do this value, what, do, what does this value system really mean to them at this point in time? I also had a chance to just have a look at uh, the values of different global organizations. For example, Google values, according to techonomy.com, uh, uh, techonomy their values are to put the user first. They say speed is a virtue. Set audacious goals. You know, embrace failure to break boundaries. And be uncompromising about people. These are things and these are values that ground Google. And at a time as this, it is when we need to reflect upon these values and ask ourselves, how can we make them relevant? Another organization that is really, it's a global organization that has values that uh, attracted my interest is LinkedIn. LinkedIn talk about members first. LinkedIn says relationships matter. LinkedIn says be open, honest, and constructive. Demand excellence. Take intelligent risks. And act like an owner. What do this really mean at this particular point in time? And we can go on and on. And I would take this time to just challenge us as individuals to reflect on the values that we have or we claim to have. My organization uh, and the team that I lead, we have a set of values that, that spell the word peak. We believe in professionalism. And the challenge is how, what is the professional thing to do at this moment to ensure that our team our clients, our environment goes through these situations successfully and without undermining their right to live fulfilled lives during this season. We talk about excellence. How do we apply our objectives in this unprecedented time to ensure that we deliver excellence to the organization and also without compromising the excellence of the clients and the people that we serve. In uncertain times as this, it is values that drive strategy. I want to repeat that again. In uncertain times as this, I put it to us that it is values that drive strategy. We must ask ourselves the following questions about our values as individual leaders and as organizations. Number one, do our values put people first over profit or our values put profit first over people? Number two, do our values only apply to our external clients, the people who buy our products, the people who buy our services? Or are they both inward and outward looking? Do our values mean anything to the internal clients, the people that build the organization, the people that work for the organizations, the people that, you know, give their time to ensure that the organizational goals are met? And number three, we need to ask ourselves, do we have a strong sense of conviction for our values? Or are they just good words on paper and on strategic documents? I realize that everything at the moment, in, under the circumstances, everything at the moment is highly volatile. Our profits are volatile. The value of shares is volatile. Oil prices is volatile. Healthcare systems, we cannot even predict among many others. But in the same breath, I also realize that within this cloud of volatility and variability and uncertainty, we have one constant that will enable us balance this equation in this time of crisis. 
It will balance the decisions we make. It will balance the solutions we develop. It will balance the actions we take. This one constant to me is the constant values. Solid values can organize an individual, a family, a company, and a nation to unity of purpose and action. I think it is time we deeply reflect on our values and what they mean in this unprecedented time in our generation. In ordinary times, my friends, values are always part of our strategy. In ordinary times, values are always part of our strategy. However, in such extraordinary times, values become the strategy. Values right now must become our strategy. The second reflection that I wanted to share with us is complementarity must become our competitive edge. We must think about complementing one another. In times of war, there is no big or small. We all become as strong as our weakest link. We cannot afford to imagine that we are still in competition. In times of war, we must complement so that we can emerge victorious on the other end. It is time for us to look out on our points of strength. It is time for us to look out on the things that we can do best. You know, and complement them with others so that we can make a common difference under these circumstances. A common enemy always has a way of uniting adversaries. Individuals and organizations and even nations must invest in taking complementary actions. It is imperative that we focus on bringing on board our strong points to complement others, as I said earlier. As leaders in our own rights, I encourage us in the current situation that this season is giving us an opportunity to build complementary relationships to our trade, to our businesses, to our innovations. And this is not new. Even in ordinary situations, companies and organizations have built complementary partnerships that have enabled them emerge successful. A good example is Apple and IBM in their new partnership where they aimed at bringing together the analytics and enterprise scale computing of IBM with the elegant use of experience of iPhone and iPad to deliver a new level of value for businesses. Another example is Apple Pay and MasterCard and their partnership helped them to offer exclusively, you know, uh, the iPhone uh, MasterCard. And this enabled them to benefit from being the first credit card company to offer Apple Pay. In our own country here, we have an example of KCB and M-Pesa, a complementary relationship that has ensured flexibility in transactions, opened up a great window for access to finance for many Kenyans who were previously unbanked. And we can go on and on. In times as these, we must look out for complementary opportunities, complementary relationships. How can I partner with my neighbor? How can I partner with the next organization to deliver products and services in these times that are very difficult for everyone? We are also seeing companies, textile companies, who were previously probably uh, putting together uh, clothes. Now, uh, you know, manufacturing prote protective gears, manufacturing uh, masks, protective masks. How can we use our strength to complement one another and face the current circumstance and situation successfully? The third point that I would want to us to reflect on together is we need to focus on humanity. 
remember the first point I said is we have to reflect on our values. Number two, we have to complement, make complementarity our competitive edge. And the third point that I'm bringing uh, to us is we need to focus on humanity. Challenges have a way of bringing people together. It is our humanity that differentiates all of us from other living creatures. Humanities remain our greatest strength. This is the time for us as individuals and leaders to show our human face more than we ever have. We need to come down to the level where we can be of care and support to one another. I am really encouraged that companies in Kenya have actually come together under the COVID-19 fund. And when you look at the board or the, the committee that is managing the COVID-19 fund, you can see organizations that would otherwise be competitors. You can see organizations that, uh, you know, would otherwise probably be looking for the same uh, clients and market spaces. But they've taken the sober decision to and, 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 and step to be human first. And at this particular time, the adjustment that we need to take as individuals, the adjustment or the, 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 the adaptation that we need to apply at this particular time is to refocus ourselves from what we can gain to being human, focus on humanity. What difference can we make? At this particular point, I will just invite us to three reflections based on what we've discussed. Number one, it is important for us to solidify our individual and organizational values. Values must have a meaning. Values must be tested. Values must be solid. In times, in unprecedented times, the only constant that will help us respond is our values. With strong and solid values, we are able to make decisions that are sober and objective. Values help us desist from reactionary approach to leadership and management that helps us have a 360 way of thinking in how we deal with uncertain and difficult times. Number two, we have to prepare to rebuild. What, whatever will happen in these very difficult times is just going to give most of us an opportunity to rebuild and the good thing is we are not where we were five years ago if you had started a business five years ago or ten years ago at this particular point we have more experience more knowledge partnerships collaborations friends we are not the same way we are we were when we first began and i encourage all leaders and individuals to prepare to rebuild. Let us not focus so much on how low our economy is going to go, on how bad our business is, on how difficult things are going to be. That is not within our control. But what is within our control is our capacity, our faith, and our attitude that gears us and prepares us to rebuild because we can rebuild we did it and i know we can do it again number three we have to assess our points of vulnerabilities this current situation gives us an opportunity and a window to have a critical assessment of our vulnerabilities as individuals families 
you know, organizations, which gaps do we fill? Where do we improve? I think most companies for the first time realized the importance of having a VPN. Most companies realize the importance of training, you know, their staff and training their workers on how to use, you know, uh, Skype, you know, and other social media or online tools for communication. At this point, we are learning and we are actually understanding points of vulnerabilities that we have. And when we come out of this, we will be better. We will have understood and assessed clearly the areas of vulnerabilities. And we shall be more resilient. When times are difficult, when things are tough for me, I take time and reflect on the words of one of my favorite leaders the words of King David. King David wrote in the book of Psalms, the 23rd chapter, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures. He will lead me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I anchor my attitude and I anchor my faith in he who created me in the beginning. For the things that I cannot control for the things that are beyond my comprehension as a leader, as a father, as a friend. These words of King David bring a lot of peace. These words of King David bring a lot of comfort that where I cannot control, the Lord is available. The Lord is present to guide me and to lead me to provide for me and he has assured that goodness, his goodness and his mercy will follow me all the days of my life. In conclusion, my friends, we need to reflect whether our values are solid enough to guide us through these unprecedented times. We need to understand that we cannot thrive as islands, we must seek complementing relationships and partnerships. We make complementarity our competitive edge. And we must focus on humanity. People come first. We can always rebuild our businesses. We can always recover our profits. The value of shares in the history you know, of uh, tra trading, share trading has had ups and downs. We've seen companies whose shares have dropped and over time have gone up. All these things that are volatile should not distract us from focusing on the most important thing as leaders. Let us focus on adjusting ourselves to ensure that people are saved, people are secured, people are comforted, people are protected. It is time to think about giving. 
and it is time to join hands together, united, to ensure that we survive and we get out of the tunnel successfully. Thank you very much for being on the cast. Thank you very much for joining me. For any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it on the page and we will sure be there to respond to them and uh, share and continue sharing on how we can actually emerge successfully and support one another as a country and as individuals in these very unprecedented times. I pray for, for blessings, pray that you will have more opportunities come up that are, that, that are innovative to enable you adjust you know, to these circumstances and situations and be of great strength and comfort and support and encouragement to the people around us. God bless you.